All right, guys, today we're going to be making a pretty cool back scratcher out of some rebar. The first thing we're going to do is forge out the claw, and at the moment I'm out of coal, so we're just going to use some firewood. Now, one of the best ways to move metal really quickly is to use the cross paint inside your hammer. That's because there's less surface area, so more power is going into the very tip of your hammer. Now, with this method, the metal's not going to look very nice. It'll have a lot of dents in it, so we'll go ahead and bring the flat face of our hammer on top of the rebar, and that'll make everything look nice and smooth. Now, I'm not sure what this next method of hammering is called, but my hammer head is basically going in a circle. So when it's at the bottom of the circle, it's basically bringing metal towards me and it seems to work pretty well. Sometimes it'll bring the metal out too quickly and too thin, but you just have to control it and that seemed to do the job pretty well. And once I have it about the thickness and the flatness that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the fingers out with an angle grinder. Now I also cut one of the fingers short to look like a thumb and our next step is to curl the finger so it looks like a hand. And I'm doing it with some pliers. You could use the horn of your anvil, but I feel like I have better control with the pliers. Now although this is a back scratcher, I don't want to give anyone tetanus. So I'm grinding all the fingers down so that they won't cut anyone. And I also ended up bending the fingers in even more so that it's mainly the knuckles that are doing the scratching because the fingertips just like to grab onto your skin and it didn't feel too nice. Now I was really excited about this handle because the wood I got was from a knot in a white oak tree that my friend cut down. And the reason why knots are so cool is because the grain structure is everywhere. There's stuff branching off right and left and curling and it makes for a really interesting looking pattern once it's all finished up. Although there was a problem with this piece, it was slightly rotten on the right side of it and it ended up falling off the lathe about halfway through the process but I just rechucked it back up and there were no problems after that. Right about here is whenever it fell off, and I was kind of mad at the time, but I just rechucked it up and decided to start sanding it. I'm using an old 60 grit belt from Harbor Freight because they don't wear out easily, and then I worked my way up to 220 grit sandpaper, and it was nice and smooth then, so I decided to part it off with a little chisel. However, this chisel caught, and it ended up scraping up the top of the handle, so I had to take it over to the belt grinder and grind out all my mistakes. Moving on to the shaft of the back scratcher, I'm using a wire wheel to knock off any rust, scale, or debris that's left on there. And it'll leave it looking relatively shiny, but it'll still have sort of like a black patina on it. Then I went ahead and drilled about an eighth inch hole in there. It's mainly just a pilot hole for the next hole that we're gonna drill. And it was just over about a quarter inch, I believe, because that's about how big our rebar was. 
And so after I drilled that, the rebar wasn't fitting in there. And that's because the rebar has those ridges. So I went ahead and ground it off and then it fit in there nicely. Now in order to have a good glue up, I made some nice notches and ridges in the rebar for the epoxy to hold on to. And that was just done with a hacksaw. Now before we start the glue up, we want to clean off the tang of our back scratcher with some mineral spirits. That's going to make sure there's no oil or grease left on there from our hands. That way the epoxy that we'll be using bonds to nothing but bare metal. I'm using some two part epoxy from Harbor Freight and it was a little bit frozen. So once I mixed it up and glued the tang in the handle, I brought it inside to cure the rest of the way. And lastly, we're going to stain the handle with some extra virgin olive oil. Not only will that make it look good, but it'll also protect the handle from any water damage. 